Those damned fools, they will doom us all. <sighs> Start recording. Captain's Log, Sol Date, April 5th, 2060. I have received orders to move the Expeditionary Fleet to Luton Star. Once there, we are to begin an investigation and assault of alien forces we encounter. We will do our best for humanity. I know the crew will. We are the best that the United States has to offer, that the Navy has to offer. But if we go into that system... Computer, pause recording. If the reports are correct... God help us. I don't think I'm going to make it out of this one. Hello and welcome back, backers and uh, soldiers of the United Earth States. We are here once again in episode 4 of the series. And we have made some changes, plans and preparations to ensure humanity's survival and dominance in this new galaxy. On screen now is the current galactic map you see. The galactic map has been portioned into four sections. Core sector space. This is the area in which we will um, colonize most of our planets. It's full of habitable worlds um, and is going to be protected by our primary fleets. Frontier sector spaces are going to be the more wild parts of the galaxy. We may have outposts or other things in those areas but for now they're frontiers. Those may change the core worlds, but for now we keep that in mind. Same with the fact that we found aliens, obviously, in Herschel 5173. So, where shall we begin today? Well, I want to um, start shipping over more resources, build up Mars more, get our fuel situation sorted, build up these colonies, and then also start designing some new ships, hopefully, um, and continue our exploration efforts where we can. I'm also considering the idea of a second generation of survey vessels, but we'll hold off on that for now for better technology. Oh yes, I also added medals. And so we have a ton of medals being awarded. It's for years of service. Um, and I'll go over those in a second. We had three new Zanzibar class uh, freighters finish up. I'm going to build another three of those. Again, we need as many freighters as we can get our hands on, ideally speaking. Um, and so that's what we will do. So we got medals. These are the ones you can find on the forums. These are uh, going to be awarded to people. And this gives us track and, and nice little flavor um, of decorated officers in the Navy. So our first uh, maintenance facilities have arrived on New Harmony and we're going to begin to move over some very much needed uh, fuel and maintenance supplies um, so that they are ready to go. We are going to get a refueling station out there as well um, and start establishing ourselves on both of these colonies properly. Vesta in the meantime has hit 4 million people and about 6-7 million people living on Vesta which we will turn into a little bit of a proper base there. Um, as our needs do arise. So we've, we've found the system of Wolf 359. It is located, if we bring it up, in the uh, Array Aranius Expanse over in this direction of the galaxy. Um, and let's have a look at what we have in system. No habitable world, two gas giants, a terrestrial world, and another Super Jovian. Could be for fuel harvesting. Decent place. Relatively small as well, so easy to survey. So, three more Basilisk class vessels have completed up. Oh god, I just uh, thingied that. The Copperhead, the Mamba, and the Taipan have been constructed, which is fantastic news. And we also, um, if I had a look at that correctly, um, we are finding quite a few resources actually in Wolf 359. We're going to actually have to take a look at that. Yep. And the other thing is Polaris, or not Polaris, but um, New Harmony nearly has... Uh, it's refueling station sorted out there. We've completed research into terraforming rate as well as the Orion main battle tank. So that is for our ground force um, overhaul. And then the terraforming rate as well is going to be a big, big bonus. Now, something that I am going to look at beginning research into is potentially genome sequence research. 
Um, but I think for now we're going to leave it and I'm going to instead direct efforts towards advanced composite armors, um, which will be done in two years. And Mars, by the way, has grown massively. We now have 324 mines on the world and we are mining 20,568 tons of resources from Mars and then shipping that over. Play research into uh, 48,000 liters fuel production. Perfect. So now we're going to look at what else we can get. Now, construction and production research kind of not doing great here. Um, I think instead we're going to boost up uh, power and propulsion research, try and get that done. Um, and we're also going to get to a tracking speed research done as well, which is important because I'm currently working on some experimental cruiser designs. If you remember in the last episode, um, we had gotten on Polaris two very fun things, two magnetic fusion drive EP600. Those are five engine techs ahead of us. And I was thinking, oh, maybe we can make an experimental cruiser. And so I've got this design come up and these two drives are so fuel efficient and capable that we can fit so many more weapons um, and capabilities on here, including 10 size 10 or 12 size 10 launchers, as well as an AMM missile system as well. So we found the system of Bernard's, uh, well actually we found a jump point that connects into Bernard's star. As we can see here, it's from Delta Carinae. Now if, uh, I'm going to check the actual capability on that in terms of if that's any actual use. Now Bernard's star had some resources that were of some value to us. So if I check the, uh, let's say, you know, we should have someone moving here. So let's say I wanted to move to, I don't know, um... You're currently stationed at jump point two. Okay, so if I were to order you, uh, no, let's grab a cargo ship or any of these ships. The Delta Aerodanny. Okay, if I said you were jump capable and I'm going to order you towards Bernard's Star, how long will that take? That would take 45 days. So you would go to Luton Star, Bernard's Star. Um, from there. So th that's not really a benefit to us. However, it does kind of put on notice that this is an existing thing that now exists on this side. It's unfortunate. Um, it does provide kind of an issue with the galactic map, but whatever. Now our fuel situation is kind of getting into a really bad state. That's because we're building a ton of ships. Um, in fact, we're going to build even more ships. We're going to order another three Basilisk class vessels, and that's going to be the final Basilisk vessels that we order. That'll give us a total of 24 of them that now exist. What we need to do um, is we need to start tugging over some stuff. So I'm going to start tugging over um, the necessary uh, fuel stations to, to probably do all. So we have discovered the system of Kipchin's Star. Now Kipchin's Star, if we have a look on the galactic map, is from comes in from Signy. Now Signy reloops up to here, which is up to the Luton Star cluster, and this is part of the Array Aranius uh, expanse. Now Kipchin's Star seems to have some decent worlds in it. We have three col low colony cost relative, uh, as well as a world that's very close to having a breathable atmosphere and very close to being habitable, um, and then a gas giant in system, two gas giants in system. So pretty good place to go. So to give a little bit of background on what I'm doing as well between um, each of the cuts, usually what I'm doing is logistics. So for example, we're going to be moving regular fuel shipments to New Harmony and Polaris to support them. We're also moving additional infrastructure and spaceports and um, mines and maintenance facilities, other things that we'll need to support various populations. That's generally what happens, and we're kind of settling up all that stuff here. So we've discussed a system of 70 Apucci. Now, 70 Apucci appears to be a binary star system that is a habitable-looking world here with pretty much habitable go. Just has to reduce the oxygen count, but a lot of gas giants could be a good resourcing. Now, what else am I working on? Well... Mars is again growing, and we are moving over a spaceport, very interestingly enough. Um, I'm also shipping resources from Stephen O'Matter because we weren't actually doing that, which was a mistake. New Harmony is growing, of course, which is always great to see. And in terms of Earth, um, we've got a lot of research on the way. We'll soon be able to start looking at building those ground forces, which we will need. Um, 
and also uh, building up our shipyard and our shipyard production capacity. So what have I just done? Well, most importantly, I just moved over the first frigate division, which will be taking guard duty over Polaris, thanks to the fact that Polaris now has capacity for 12,000 tons maintained. So they will be protecting Polaris for now. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be looking at building some surface stop weapon systems, which we don't yet have. Um, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. We have um, obviously been exploring, but Altair, the Onesus, has its first colonist now on it. So we're now in three different star systems. Always good to see that. And we're going to start moving over some additional forces. Now, of course, we have Colonial Corps here, Colonial Corps there. Once we have enough colonists, we will move another colonial court over there. I mean, they're going to be obsolete soon, but it's definitely going to be interesting enough <laughs> to look at. So we've now grown invest up to a point where we're going to start moving over some important things, uh, such as refueling stations, um, all the transfer station, and a... Yeah, a transfer station and also a cargo shuttle station. As well as, if I can do it here, maintenance facilities. I'd like to move over 30 maintenance facilities to Vesta. Um, and Vesta is going to be a little bit of an outpost in between this to prevent people getting into Sol. Also, oh my god, the map does look ridiculous. <laughs> there we go. Turn active sensors off, please. Turn thermal sensors off. Turn fleets off for now. I'll oh, actually turn asteroids off. Turn fleets back on. Turn civilians off though. We complete research into turret tracking speed, which is a beautiful thing to have gotten unlocked. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to we're finishing up our ground force stuff, but we are going to look at energy weapons. And I think I'm going to go for 25 centimeter carronades next. And the final three Basilisk class vessels have completed. There will be no more Basilisk class vessels. There might be some modifications or some other changes around, but there will be no more Basilisk class vessels. So that now gives us a total of, if I just grab these guys, that gives us 12 Basilisk class vessels and a total of 24 of them. I'm going to go ahead and get them all organized up and ready to be moved around. Composite armors are now done, which is great. So we can go ahead and upgrade our ground forces and also a bunch of other stuff. So we're probably going to need to see this all over again. Um, but it's pretty nice to begin with that we've got that now done. And we're going to go ahead and probably research sensor firing your weapons because we need to get our tracking speed up. Um, that's kind of a priority at the moment. So we've built three new naval shipyards. We can get those naval shipyards built. Um, what I'm actually going to do uh, is I'm going to build them. Uh, so delete activity. Yeah. I'm going to move all three of these to Mars and have Mars build them. Mars now has a larger population. It's also got a spaceport. And I want Mars to be able to start managing some of the shipyard things so we need uranium and neutronium for expansion reasons so i'm going to go ahead and set reserve limits for this so i'm going to say 2000 um it's going to be reserve and then for neutronium uh we're going to go ahead and say that 2000 is the reserve as well um so get those reserves built up and then they'll ship anything extra off as well um but for now we don't need um anything else um, so we're going to go have our Mars build that later on. Found another system. Uh, this is Eta Monoceratois and is located, if I can find, Eta Monoceratois is located in the Array Orianus Expanse. Now it has 386 asteroids, uh, which is very interesting indeed, actually. Holy hell. That's a lot of asteroids all around the star. Could be a lot of resources. Might mean we need to look at man orbital mining uh, capability. Mars 
Mars now hitting a population of 86 million people. Pretty massive right there. Um, Earth is still growing, of course, but Mars is doing pretty well for itself, actually. We just need to get the actual colonies, uh, like terraforming work done, which we are building terraform installations. In fact, we should probably start building, you know, start constructing a lot more of them. Um, we need to get as many of those built as possible, ideally. We discover a system of Kruger 60. Now, Kruger 60, there is a habitable world here with a breathable atmosphere. Temperature factor of 0 0.46, so it's a little bit colder. There's also a couple of other habitable worlds, and then there is a secondary star. Now, Kruger 60 is located in... If, we, if I can look here. So, Sirius 61 Sydney Delta Karen 8 Kruger. Let's see if there's any aliens here, because that could be a real issue. <laughs> that could be a real issue indeed. I'm going to send the Azeros, uh, if possible. To Kruger. Okay, we've begun survey in system. Now, uh, what do we have in here? Let's have a look. So, this world, which is the habitable world, doesn't have much. This world, which is the second ha most habitable, has a decent amount. So does the other one. Good amount of galaxite. Good amount of uranium as well. And then we have good amount of sorium, magnesium, uranium here. Gravity is 0.97, almost exactly Earth gravity. No aliens detected here either. And the gas giant has sorium, uh, so this is definitely a place we want to hit towards. So I am going to start stabilizing that direction, and then we can also go up to Bernard's star from here. But yeah, definitely an area we want to go towards. So we now have three cruiser destroyer fleets. We have the second, fourth, fifth, and the first, third, and sixth, uh, each in their own task force. So Defense Task Force 1, Expedition Task Force 1 under Home Fleet. And this gives us approximately 135, about 270,000 tons of ships. Um, and those ships we will use to attack enemies. Uh, it also gives us a decent amount of missile stockpiles on each of the vessels. Um, and we will obviously need to replace those missiles. In fact, I'm going to um, order up more missiles to be constructed. Uh, let's go for 300 more missiles at 100% production rates. Mars also now has terraformers on Mars. I'm going to start terraforming the atmosphere. So we need to first deal with the uh, temperature situation. So we need to increase temperatures. So we're going to add in a tesium. So we're going to try and add as much atesium as possible, um, and that should take, yeah, we're at 0 0.074, so that's going to take quite a bit of time. We only have 24 installations on Mars so far, but we are going to need to pump those numbers up as much as we can, ideally. Now, I am thinking of an operation. Operation Kill the Aliens in Herschel 5173. Now, distance from Seoul is about 20 billion kilometers. Do is we're going to send the expedition force forward. Now, we should have all ships ready to go, which we seemingly do. Let me just check everything. One of our ships is damaged, so we'll get that repaired. But I want everything refueled and good to go. Make sure they replace ordnance with the best ordnance possible. And then we are going to send our ships in now. Estimates on enemy ship capability. Total of seven enemy ships with a total signature of 9,000 tons with a speed of 5,900. So we are outmatched in terms of speed, but they didn't appear to have missile capability. And so that is what we're going to try and take advantage of. Okay, so we're going to grab the ST Roadrunner, attach it accordingly, 
uh, and we have a total of 145,000 tons ready to go. Uh, we're going to send that immediately towards Luton's star. And then we are going to enter or move to the Herschel jump point. The reason that I have decided this is, number one, if we have a look, I mean, this world means we're going to colonize this as 159%. However, God, we have so many systems now. Um, Herschel has this world. Now, this world is another very, very colonizable world. And also, this system appears to have quite a few resources in it. Based on this fact, we can see here that we have this system, this system. So, Sirius, 75 Apucci, Altair, Kruger, and Herschel. These systems are the most important. If we can control all of these in decent capacity, as well as the surrounding outlying systems, we can build a proper big empire. And so, that's going to be the uh, main thing that we're going to try and do. If we secure the space in system, we are going to um, put, uh, control, uh, destroy any any ships and then we'll come back eventually with troop transports. That will be the primary uh, goal. Um, this could end very badly, of course. There's always that risk, but we take risks in the service to do the best we can. The first cruiser trust project I'm going to rename at the moment. Uh, we have many of the Mark two ASMs as well as the Mark 1s. We're going to rename this to the um, No, we're going to not rename this. This is fine for now. First Cruiser Destroyer Squadron, the third Cruiser Destroyer Squadron, and the sixth Cruiser Destroyer Squadron all ready to go. Nearly at the point. Okay, we have arrived. Now, we are go the f two things we're going to do. First off, detach the uh, Roadrunner. Second off, we are going to detach the lucky DD-13, who is going to go through first, because we do not have the ability to squadron jump. Um, in fact, actually, we're going to try a squadron jump, which we should be able to do. No, we can't, because we'd have to bring the other thing with us. So, we're going to do a standard transit. We have completed the transit. Give me active sensors. Active sensors are on at the moment. Looks like it's clear. Going through the entire fleet. Three light cruisers and 12 destroyers are in our service here. Now, give me wreck information. Where was the wreck found? It was found in the middle of the system above... In the asteroid belt. We're going to head towards the wreck. As best we can. We have about 40% fuel on all of these. With 13.4 million litres total. Um, worst comes to worst. We can move tankers over and refuel them on the midway point. If we want to, to get back. If we want to get back to, I don't know, Sirius. That wouldn't take too, too much. So... That's something at least, because we're about 40% and these guys can go about 20 billion kilometers, so not too, too bad. No, don't do that. Okay, we've arrived. Let's have a look at those wrecks. Move to. It's going to take 12 days to arrive. Okay, we are now in the inner solar system. So far, no contact. Give me information on this uh, system. Uh, A2 is a possible target in the first system. That's correct. We have detection of enemy. They have shields. Pretty good shields, actually. Okay, we've got missiles incoming. Uh, we did not even see them. Distance. Any, uh, distance, missiles, distance. 180, 1,000 kilometers. Uh, all weapons ready up, spool up. Uh, missiles assigned. Assign all I want. Lasers assigned. Assign fleet, please. Who's up? Assign all PD lasers. 
point defense modes. Okay, so new point defense. Uh, point blank defensive fire. Now, what speed are they moving at? 32,000 kilometers per second. So that is going to indicate that they will be able to move 150,000 kilometers a second. A second. So we're going to do point blank defensive fire. And we are going to move back because this could go very badly or very quickly depending on their tech level. Um, so we're going to go point uh, blank defensive fire. Um, we are going to then priority one. Shots per target. <laughs> uh, shots per target. I think. Yeah, target is this missile salvo, but we're going to do point blank defensive fire. I think four shots per target, but they've got a total of how many missiles? That's a two shots per target. Okay, assign fleet. Go for missiles per target two. Combined defensive fire. Shots per target two. And then we're going to go for priority one, sign fleet. Move away back towards the wreck, please. Okay, we had impact. Um, we fired. How many missiles were destroyed? We destroyed 15 missiles. They hit. Uh, we hit decoys. They had decoys. Okay, let's situation. We only killed seven missiles. We hit eight of the decoys. Um, EDUSS Cobra was hit and destroyed. Okay, pull the fleet back, please. And what is missile range on this? We have missile capability. 14 million kilometers. They have a miss. How far are their missile ranges? 50 million kilometers. Okay, just to be clear, how many fired there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think most of them fired. I think, yeah, I think most of them fired. We fired 74 shots, we only killed 7 missiles. So, oh god. Okay, pull it back, pull it back. More missiles incoming. This is not good. 37 missiles detected on incoming trajectory. Time to impact. 10 seconds. Boom. <laughs> oh uh, we have 15 decoys. Okay, Sidewinder destroyed. Okay, massive magazine explosion. The light cruiser has been destroyed. I can't even detect what we're looking at. Four ships destroyed total. Get that cruiser squadron out of there. I want back to that jump point immediately. I can't get the life pods. All the commanders are going to have to die, including all the surviving crew members. We lost two light cruisers and we lost um, two destroyers. We are severely outclassed here. They appear to have massive fire superiority capability over us, uh, as well as better sensor technology. Better decoy technology. Um, do we get a laser on that? No. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, comparatively speaking, if those, I mean, those missiles... Assuming, okay, they fired how many missiles at us? It's 30 missiles. Um, 32 of them impacted. We killed 15 decoys. Yeah, like, they have better electronic warfare tech, 100%. They have better decoy technology. The laser fire did not do that well. Um, we need more point defense capability. We need more AMM capability. We need better ECM capability. Um, and yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave the episode off. Jesus Christ. Maybe that was a bad call. I think the person who ordered this mission is going to get court-martialed. Um, yeah, as you can see here, decoys here. Um, we are outclassed. We are going to need numbers if we're going to win fights here. We need um, to guard our jump points and we need to order the necessary things to do so. Um, I, I'm thinking we... we uh, block off jump points we build maintenance stations as well as point defense stations to hold jump points with laser fire i'm thinking we then um research one better missile tech but two better point defense capability we do have the new uh rapid fire lasers and we also are going to have the AMMs, which we are going to try and implement. So we need to upscale our ships, get some AMMs going. I'm thinking some SeaWiz as well is going to be a good idea, um, as well as better armor. So these are all things we'll need to think about, but I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Goodbye.